new flu strain in China uh, found in pigs, but that has pandemic it has the potential. potential to cross over to humans and become yet another devastating pandemic. With this kind of environment and condition, we fear the worst. The strain of swine flu from pig farms in China has been noted as significant due to its pandemic potential. The virus called G4EAH1N1 is genetically descended from the H1N1 strain that caused the pandemic in 2009. In fact, it is a unique blend of three lineages, one similar to strains found in European and Asian birds, the H1N1 strain that caused the 2009 pandemic, and a North American H1N1 that has genes from avian, human and pig influenza viruses. What's important to note is that the G4 strain is a blend of lineages from all over the world, meaning it is not a uniquely Chinese issue. It is an amalgamation of strains from animal farming in places including Europe and North America. Another important point to recognize is that the G4 strain isn't the only strain that has been currently monitored. In fact, in China alone, between 2011 and 2018, 179 swine influenza viruses were discovered through swab tests on pigs in pig farms. But this isn't just a problem in China, as a 2015 study carried out by the US National Institutes of Health mapped the genetic sequences of swine flu viruses and found that Europe and the US, the largest global exporters of pigs, are also the largest exporters of swine flu. The G4 strain is gaining notoriety now because since its discovery in 2018, its ability to spread between pigs and from pigs to humans is becoming increasingly more alarming. Fortunately for now, it appears that the new strain has not developed human-to-human -human transmission. However, at any point it could, and then it would pose a significant and serious threat to human health. The problem is, when multiple strains of influenza viruses infect the same pig, they can easily swap genes, a process known as reassortment. And with animal agriculture killing an estimated 1.5 billion pigs each year globally, that's a huge number of pigs where the possibility of reassortment can take place. Pigs are also susceptible to both human and bird influenza viruses, and they can therefore act as intermediary hosts or mixing vessels in which new influenza viruses can arise. Couple that with the fact that these pigs are raised in universally horrid conditions, whether it be in China, the US, the UK, Germany, it just doesn't matter as pigs are raised consistently the same, living in concrete pens, mutilated, piled on top of one another, or immobilized in crates so small they can't even turn around. The way that we force these animals to live, and because they're selectively bred, meaning that the population gene pool is narrowed, has created the perfect environment for infectious zoonotic disease to mutate and spread. And although intensive factory farming significantly increases this risk, it can't be ignored that all systems of animal farming create a risk that wouldn't exist if the farming wasn't taking place. To make matters even worse, when asked about the G4 strain's ability to mutate, Robert Webster, a world-renowned influenza investigator and expert, stated, It's a guessing game. We just do not know when a pandemic is going to occur until the damn thing occurs. What we do know, however, is that pig farming creates deadly strains of swine flu that can go on to cause pandemics and kill hundreds of thousands of people. We do know that this isn't a geographically specific problem, as strains of swine flu are detected all over the world. For example, the 2009 swine flu pandemic started in Mexico, but the virus's genetic lineage was traced back to a pig farm in North Carolina. The fact of the matter is, we know exactly what causes swine flu, and we know that pig farming is the number one risk factor in the creation and spread of swine flu. In fact, the risks to human health posed by animal farming have been highlighted for years and led the American Public Health Association, one of the largest and oldest associations of public health professionals in the world, to call for a moratorium on factory farming in 2003. And even though we know the risk of influenza viruses is high, we have no idea when an influenza virus could mutate to become effective at human-to-human -human transmission or how deadly it will be. Simply put, our current strategy is to cross our fingers and leave it up to fate. Because seriously, what is the point in monitoring disease if preventative measures are not put in place? All we are doing is watching 
as these viruses become more virulent and more concerning until eventually one becomes effective at human to human transmission and then we just hold our breath and hope that the death rate isn't high enough to kill millions of people. It's like watching your house burn down and instead of putting it out, you're spraying more fuel onto the fire than standing by monitoring and taking notes rather than dealing with the actual problem. We've been monitoring viruses for decades, watching them mutate and spread around the world. And yet, in that time, instead of dealing with the problem, we've done the opposite. Globally, we farm more pigs than ever. And our governments, every single year, give pig farmers tens of billions globally in subsidies to make what they do more financially cost-effective. There is something clearly wrong when a system that is known for causing serious diseases is not only allowed to continue, but is supported with our taxpayers' money. Our governments are using our tax money to perpetuate industries that cause global pandemics and disease. Our governments are effectively funding public health emergencies that lead to death with our money. The 2009 swine flu pandemic was paid for by the American taxpayer. But there is hope because it's empowering to realize that we're not powerless in the face of future pandemics. As consumers, we have a massive amount of power when it comes to protecting our species from infectious diseases as well as the lives of non-human animals. One thing we can all do to help simply is look in our shopping baskets and see if the items that we're buying perpetuate the problem. But we must also recognize that by eating animal products and allowing these systems to continue, we are playing Russian roulette with our lives. And as the recent swine flu has illustrated, the next outbreak could happen anytime, anywhere. We can't afford to be complacent. Because as long as animal farming is allowed to continue, the issue of pandemics will always be a when and not an if.